And uh, uh, would you know, Shikha, whether people will be joining on Zoom and YouTube both, or it's predominantly Zoom? More on Zoom. All on Zoom. Okay, lovely. Makes it, makes it easier, I guess. So, uh, one more minute to go. I think we are live on YouTube and live on Zoom, man. So, one more minute and we'll start. Okay, okay. I think many people have joined us. Many teachers right. have already joined, yeah. Looks, looks like we, we have 50 plus participants already, which is very good. That's good, yeah. So, how many teachers in all in the school, man? So, we have around uh, staffed of 120 people including That's kindergarten right. teachers and senior teachers. So I tried my level best that all the people should join us. I wanted all the teachers to be there with us and hopefully all will be Fantastic. There. Oh, that, that's so lovely. 30 more seconds uh, and uh, we then go live. So Pratibha ma'am has said good yeah. morning to everyone. Good morning, Pratibha ma'am. Good morning to you too. It's 9.30 and it's uh, time to start. Vivek, Reena ma'am, if you allow me, can we start? Yes, please start. Lovely. So good morning, everyone. Good morning, teachers. Good morning, Reena, ma'am, uh, Vivek. Such a pleasure again to see all of you today morning. Good morning, uh, students, if some of them are there on this webinar. Welcome to Ideas That Matter. Ideas That Matter is a series of webinars that Shulini University has started. Vivek and I do this every day either 9.30 in the morning or 3.30, and sometimes we've done even two a day. The whole idea behind Ideas That Matter is to speak to all of you, teachers and students, or sometimes parents, and to inspire you. We're going through tough times, and it's about inspiration at the moment. People who get inspired can do wonderful things, extraordinary things. You've spoken about varied topics, from leadership to creativity to meditation, and other areas of interest to you. Today, we'll be talking about creativity. And uh, as a quick introduction to our speaker and the host of the day, Vivek Atre, ex IS officer, TEDx speaker, motivational speaker, author of three books, the architect of the IT park in Chandigarh. But more importantly to me, as I always say, a very dear friend and a visiting professor at Shulini. My introduction, I'm a BTEC from IIT Kanpur. I then did an MBA from Jamnalal Bajaj, Bombay. I'm a Solon boy, grew up in Himachal Pradesh. And post that, I've uh, worked in several multinationals, seven different countries, 35 different cities. Last job was with uh, Olive Wyman, where I was the Indian CEO. That's a large multinational. Uh, but then the teaching bug hit me, and uh, I moved back to India. I've always believed that India is where home is, and teaching is where home is. So I love being a teacher and I love speaking and I love being with students and teachers. So that's why Vivek and I are here today. We love to speak and talk. And uh, before we start, uh, Reena ma'am, we'd love you to uh, speak for a minute, introduce your school to us, and we'll then get into the session. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Reema Grover, principal of Royal Convent School, Nihal Singhwala. Taking a break, I would love to introduce uh, Gurdeep Singh Valiaji. He's the chairman of our school and he's already there with us. I hope you could all see him on the screen. Yeah. Hello, Gurdeep ji. Uh, so lovely to see you. You are muted, Gurdeep ji. So you yeah, might want to unmute yourself. Kamal, can you unmute Gurdeep ji? Ah, yeah. You are Hello, fine now. Hello, can you hear me, Mr. Atri? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah good morning, yes, sir. We could hear you, yeah. <laughs> good morning, ma'am. Good morning. And good morning, Mr. Atri. So nice to see morning. you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Good, morning. Uh, good morning, sir. Okay. Over to you, ma'am. Okay. Hello. So, uh, first of all, I forward uh, my heartiest greetings to Mr. Vivek Atriji and uh, Mr. Atul Khosleji and uh, Madam Shikha. And they are all the people behind having this wonderful time with us. And uh, from my teacher side, from my management side, all the children were going to be with us. I forward my thanks for the time you are going to spare with us for the wonderful topic. Creativity is the elixir of life. I think the topic itself speaks. This is going to be a very you know, great uh, knowledge bucket for the teachers. Because you know, teachers are the people who are always expected to be most creative. So I think we are going to really have a wonderful talk with you all and having you know, great knowledge ahead with us. Thank you so much, sir. You please proceed. 
Thank you, Rina, ma'am. Thank you, Gurdeep ji. Uh, creativity You're is welcome. so essential in today's world. Creativity creates inspiration and creativity makes ordinary people extraordinary. We'll be talking about that and who better than Vivek Arthre to talk about it. Over to you, Vivek. I'll request other participants to please stop the videos and mute themselves. And uh, towards the end for q and I'll request all of you to please rejoin so that we can together answer all the queries that are there. Over to you, Vivek Atre. Thank you, Atul Kosla. Thank you very much. And thank you, Rima Ma'am and Gurdeep, sir. Very nice to meet you all online. And uh, maybe we will meet one day in real life also. Sure, sure. Atul, uh, it's a pleasure to be speaking at this uh, <clears throat> webinar series of Shulini University. Shulini University has already conducted so many of these webinars with schools all over North India. And yesterday, we actually had a webinar with the Kolkata School, Indus Valley World School. So it was wonderful to be speaking to teachers in Kolkata from here. And uh, today, we are with you, and it's a wonderful opportunity to speak to so many teachers. I see that more than 115 participants are already there online. So that's wonderful. A nice response on your side. And I feel that it is a very good opportunity to talk about subjects which otherwise we might overlook. In the normal course of life, we hardly get time to uh, get into deep-rooted uh, thinking. And we are normally very much uh, in a tizzy, busy about this and that, running about here and there, and uh, routine life takes over. And most of us in 2020 are without any uh, moments of pausing, reflecting, meditating. Most of us are on the treadmill uh, in real life, and that treadmill is not only the physical exercise treadmill, but a figurative treadmill. You can say it is like a metaphorical treadmill, which is uh, a kind of treadmill which makes us run from here to there, but we reach nowhere because we are always running after goals which keep on shifting. And uh, if the children of today, the students of today are to be guided and uh, uh, supported in their upbringing properly, then the teachers of today have to be inspired. And if the teachers are inspired, then the students also will receive that inspiration. So this is a webinar series that Shulini has started, Ideas That Matter, which is a wonderful idea to take forward this uh, thought process to many, many schools. And uh, Shulini University is where I'm also a visiting professor. I must tell you that firstly, creativity is like a part of the Shulini University family and the ethos. They are uh, really focusing on creativity, which leads to innovation and research. Atul Khosla will tell you more about it later in this event. So let me talk about the fact that uh, the right side of the brain is the side of the brain which is uh, amenable to creative thinking. The left side of the brain is for logical thinking. And uh, if we look at ourselves, most of the time we are thinking in terms of organization, logistics, we are thinking of calculation, we are thinking of routine things. There we use only the left side of our brain. The right side doesn't get used at all. Creative thinking is like, I'm going in a bus, and I see something on the road which inspires me to make a change in my own life. So I'm going to just mention the Golgappa Wala, who is a favorite of mine. And this Golgappa Wala, he stands on the roadside in Chandigarh. And uh, I have seen him many, many years. He's still there. And whenever I cross that Golgappa Wala, he's always smiling. He has a jar of water and a box of Golgappas and very poor man very uh, rickshaw walas and auto walas and labor, they stop there and eat his bulk of us. And, uh, but he's always cheerful. So when I see him, I try to learn from him that being poor or being uh, standing on the roadside selling bulk of us can make you happy because he's happy. So when I get inspiration from there, it is a creative thought process. Otherwise I can go on living my life in a routine and not learn from others. So teachers as well as uh, people who are experienced can keep learning from others. And that makes you more creative. You don't want to have too much of status quo in your life. 
that means that going with the flow is okay but it should not be stagnating so we should not have uh, the same uh, look the same uh, colors the same everything every day every day we change our colors our our appearance our hairstyle at times some people grow a beard some men they shave the beard they have a mustache they shave the mustache the look keeps changing at times not that we want to disguise ourselves but it just leads to a fresh way of thinking and mark zuckerberg you know is the founder of facebook he is also the owner of instagram and whatsapp and mark zuckerberg says i don't want to spend time deciding what to wear in the morning i wear the same colored clothes every day now that's good for him because he has so much of creativity to do with facebook whatsapp and instagram but for someone like me and you even that is a creative process in the morning thinking what to wear which color or which shirt so that process also brings out the creativity because you want something new and different and of course uh, if i can say so the ladies may take 5 10 minutes extra to decide what to wear and they are also the ones who have less time because in the morning uh, ladies have to do more work than men and that is still a norm in 2020 the men are sitting reading newspapers and then they get ready and they go for breakfast and then they go to work and uh, the other the ladies are the ones doing the work so they are the ones who have to take time to decide what is creativity otherwise einstein said creativity is intelligence having fun he said its creativity is intelligence having fun it means that we are doing something new and unique in our lives which brings that magic that color that joy to our lives so creativity as the topic says is the elixir of life the elixir means it's like a magical uh, potion in our lives if we start thinking of creative ideas let us look at someone who has innovated a mask in these corona times you may have seen a person in a whatsapp message which said which showed a picture of a man wearing a plastic can which a water kind of bottle in cut from one side where he is wearing it and he's breathing through that nozzle which has been opened to the sky and it's a west indian person i think that picture is from there so that kind of uh, approach to life is a very unique approach i know of a girl who could not wake up early in uh, the morning and i read about her she used to snooze 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 all the time she would press the snooze alarm about 10 times so instead of getting up at 7 o'clock she would get up at 7:45 and 8 o'clock she has to leave for wherever she has to go so it's not easy to lead a life like that and 7 o'clock she would uh, start snoozing hitting the snooze button wasn't able to get up one day she decided to do something about it what was the creativity that she did she actually invented an alarm clock which after three times of snooze that alarm clock would somehow move off the table with a robot like uh, approach and walk towards the wall and in the winters if you have to get out of your quilt and walk towards the wall and the window to switch off the alarm because the alarm is blaring loudly then the sleep is gone and she had to get up wake up so she did that for herself it was a creative idea i also will share with you just a little startup idea that somebody did somebody realized that he has a 100 books at home which he will never read again doesn't need to and another friend may have a similar number of books which he wants to read the first person wants to read the second person's books so this startup started delivering old books from one house to another and exchanging them for a little fee nominal fee and these books would be transported from one place to another to another to another and there was a website and you could order the books or list out the books which you want to donate and the books which you want to receive so this was a way in which the books were received from all over the place of course we weren't thinking of things like corona virus and infection at that time but even today if we are thinking like that we have we are 
trying to uh, get too much into the negative frame of mind and creativity won't be possible those who are stressed out tense worried will find creativity to be difficult because creativity comes from a calm mind it comes from calmness and if calmness is with you then you'll be able to be creative so if you have a, an approach to life which is full of worries and of course everybody has worries and problems and ups and downs there is nobody who is living a totally smooth life so if you have worries it's okay to think about them once in a while sometime but not all the time and not most of the time so we minimize our worries and our mind becomes calmer and we become more creative the other way to do it is to start some creative activity which will then make you feel calmer and then it becomes a good cycle uh, my daughter kavya the young woman she uh, does something called art therapy she has just learned it and she has started practicing it with her friends and with other youngsters so art therapy basically means that she makes people draw and sketch and paint and online she is doing these classes and they come out of their depression or stress or tension or worries because of that art activity it could be music it could be writing it is art in her case it could be photography all these are therapy kinds of activity therapeutic and they lead to more creativity and this creativity becomes a part of your life if you are a teacher who is now 40 years old let's say you think at 40 you are now i mean uh, in the middle ages there nothing new for you to learn but that is wrong you have to keep learning you learn a new language french you learn online about 100 words not very difficult or you want to learn even uh, kannada for some reason just learn it and try and find that new excitement in your life which will give you that satisfaction and you will look forward to it so if you have a routine life from monday to friday or saturday at least on sunday spend a couple of hours reading that book which you always wanted to read taking those pictures in your phone camera which can be taken outside or even inside great photography can result or drawing that painting or making that sketch or whatever it is that you always wanted to do these are things which will work we'll also talk about little more about writing therapy when we come back atul khosla has some wonderful ideas to share with you on creativity as well as on uh, an experiment and a research project that shulini university carried out over to you atul thank you vivek uh... So lovely to always hear your words. So creativity teachers, students can make ordinary people extraordinary. Creativity enhances EQ or emotional intelligence. And we all know that to succeed in this world, we need not just IQ, but EQ. So creativity is about using the right brain as we may accept. And there are multiple tools for doing that, but before I get into all some of those tools, and uh, I'll do that in the latter part of the talk of the talk today. I wanted to bring in a thought by Sir Ken Robinson. Sir Ken Robinson is one of the leading educationists in the UK, and he argues that creativity should be brought in uh, as an essential part of learning, as literacy is. He argues that creativity is as important as learning to read and write. And his thought is actually very interesting. He talks about a couple of examples in a very great book called uh, The Elements, and I'll request all the teachers to read this book. And the example is uh, a lady by the name of Jane McDonald. Jane McDonald is one of the leading ballet dancers of the world. But when she went to school, she was diagnosed with hyperactivism and was taken to a psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist told her parents that she needed medication because she was too active. Luckily, the parents took her to another psychiatrist, psychologist, who basically said, I think she can't sit at one place. Probably she should dance, put her into a dance school. They put her into a dance school. She learned how to dance and the rest is history. Shekhar Kapoor, whom I once met, Vivek, told me a very interesting story. He said his daughter, she was doing some amazing art before going to school. He and his wife thought that she's going to be an amazing artist going forward. She probably had the genes of Picasso. She would do amazing impressionist art. 
till she went to nursery school and three days after the school she came back and started painting and you know what she painted she painted a mountain with the sun at the back and the river flowing and her house in the background and i think that sometimes that we do in college and school i hope and i'm sure that uh, your school doesn't do that but the point i'm trying to drive over here is that as teachers we have to become creative ourselves but we also have to bring in the creativity of students every student is different every child is different and we have to allow them to prosper in the way we think we have to let them think in different directions we have to break the box of thinking there's nothing like right thinking or bad thinking any idea is a great idea do not kill ideas let them prosper so i do a lot of idea workshops we wait and in an idea workshop we say if you're solving a problem we say any idea is a good idea but you cannot discuss the idea in an idea workshop just throw ideas because the moment you start discussing ideas people get extremely defensive and that happens in children and teachers and in any environment so i'm going to talk about a student of ours aman and i'm going to talk a little bit about shilini so we are very proud of bringing creativity and innovation into the way we teach i'm completely convinced we make that learning is all about inspiration if you can bring in inspiration to students you can bring in creativity into students they can do extraordinary things and it's not just about arts i think the fun is about bringing creativity into science into technology into artificial intelligence into management sciences into economics and into something as boring as psychology and sociology and it can be done so aman is an example of a student at shulani she was a tough student she was a difficult student and you all know what a difficult student is she didn't do very well in a bachelor's and masters that she did at shulani and then some magic happened when she went to do her phd she has discovered a molecule a biomolecule which when added to water kills bacterial activity in water by 99.9% after dipping this molecule for 3 to 5 minutes it's a path breaking discovery to the extent that aman is now one young water fellowship which is a fellowship given to only one individual across the world it's a un sponsored fellowship more than 100000 researchers apply for this every year and the winner spent 6 months in geneva learning the trades of water and the uses of water so aman won it across the world imagine every kid from every university across the world was competing against aman harvard mit oxford iits and others aman won it so what made aman special i think it was thinking outside the box i'll show the video to you now uh, it's 2 minutes of a video and then i want to tell you the story of how aman did it uh vivek if you allow me please please
that's the story of Aman. But the story gets very interesting, Vivek, which even you've not heard. So Moringa is nothing but drumsticks that we use in Sambhar. You must have seen those. These are Moringa. So Moringa is known to have antibiotic properties. So Aman's research was to identify the antibiotic properties of uh, Moringa. So as luck would have it, so to, to do the experiment, you have to create a soluble base that you put on a slide. And that base is made out of water. And then they had to put Moringa seeds to see, if they put some bacteria over there to see whether it kills the bacteria or not. As luck would have it, Vivek, the lab attendant, rather than put distilled water, put water from, uh, from the tap without uh, telling anyone. So this was a piece of luck because normally you'll put distilled water. And when they started doing the experiment, they figured out that you know, it had bacteria and the bacteria was getting killed. The water bacteria was getting killed. Now, Aman could have thrown the dish into the uh, dustbin and said, what the heck, let's do another experiment. But knowing Aman and knowing how creative she and her professors were, they went back and said something different has happened. And this is how uh, amazing the discovery is. And this is how by accident you can discover some amazing stuff. So Aman, uh, this, this uh, discovery is so pathbreaking that Aman could change the way the people in the world drink water. Who knows today, tomorrow, she might even win the Nobel Prize. And that's what creativity does. I have a few more thoughts on creativity, uh, how you can use storytelling to build creativity. But I'll first let Vivek take you through more thoughts from his and then I'll come towards the end to talk about uh, my journey on creativity. Vivek, over to you. Thank you, Atul. Thank you. Very inspiring example of Aman and creativity. Creativity is something that brings out magic, as Atul also said. And we need some magic in our life. So we need to think differently uh, most of the time. And teachers, let's talk about creativity in school. Uh, if students are there who are obviously coming every year, different batches come to you, and you are holding these classes after lockdown, you go to the classroom. You have taught a particular chapter from, let's say, English every year for the last 10 years. The same chapter you are teaching now. And the students are different every year, obviously. Now, in that chapter, you already have practiced it 100 times, 10 times at least you have taught it. You can bring in some variety now with different stories, different examples, different uh, case studies, whatever it is. It could be a subject which is different like history, some anecdote of Akbar or Ashoka or whatever you're teaching, which, the, which you have not yet used. In that way, you are challenging your own self. You are bringing newness into your own life and you feel good about it. The students have not heard you before. They are a different batch from that chapter which you taught last year. And in that newness, you bring uh, that excitement to your own mind and to your own heart. And that is something which gives so much satisfaction. Also, creativity in school could be ways of recognizing students. So everybody recognizes the punctual one and the uh, one who does the best project and gets the most marks and best in sports. There could be something else, which is, let's say, the one who has more empathy for other students, the one who shares the most, the one who is most well-mannered and well-behaved, I'm sure you have these kinds of recognition also, but anything new in your mind that you can change. Grandparents' Day was not celebrated earlier in many times. And re in recent years, I've heard of Grandparents' Day in school. And uh, in, we also have a toddler school where we are located. And my wife runs a toddler's preschool in Panchkula, where I'm speaking from now. And uh, she has this Grandparents' Day for the last few years. The grandparents love it. They come and they get involved and they have music and they have activities. And the children and the grandparents, they really talk about it for many months to come. So creativity in school will make your life more enjoyable, more pleasurable and more exciting. That is something you must do. I was talking about writing. Writing therapy or the habit of writing will also bring out the creativity in you and reduce your stress and worry. If you write out a page for yourself, it is said that you will express that as if you are talking to someone about it. 
there are certain things in life which trouble us pain us hurt us if we can write them down we become a little lighter in the mind you can burn that paper or throw that paper later if it has all your secrets of life but you can also write down your happy moments of life keep that with you and you can write down the positives and negatives both also storytelling atul is going to talk about but if we talk about uh, story writing fiction that also will bring out creativity in you maybe you are not a great writer you are an okay writer even so start writing i will tell you how i became creative as a writer in service so i was an is officer i was earlier in hcs and i was sdm kalka in kalka i would have uh, very busy times but once in a while i would have a free time in the evening so i would write something i started writing and one of them got published in the tribune then uh, regularly they started getting published in the tribune and then later i became an author of three books as atul said my first book was called move on bunny second book was called dube ji bounces back and third book is called finding success within so these books will uh, uh, gave me a lot of joy because of my creativity of course office was going on work was going on but when i had something like this in my life then that creative pursuit made me even better in my office work because i bring that joy from this creative activity to my work also that feeling of having accomplished something positive that stays with me so that is a way to improve your life in many ways and keep on doing something like that some of you may be great singers and some of you may be great uh, let's say musicians or artists or photographers or anything even sports sports is something that we must indulge in not only for physical fitness it is also a creative activity and uh, children must be taught and uh, inspired to play outdoors a little more i mean how much creativity is there in pubg pubg on the phone will not give them that physical activity it will not give them that balanced development maybe a little bit of video games or whatever it is on the phone is okay but if children are playing one hour outdoors then they will sleep on time also that is something i encourage a sportsman or sportswoman is always more creative also and more cheerful more happy in life let me also share with you the story of my brother in law my sister in law my wife sister and her husband so they ramona and jujha they started something called cafedreams.com at one time they were in uh, journalism in tv journalism and then they started this venture now this cafe dreams.com was started in 2005 or 2004 when the dot com uh, revolution was not succeeding and e-commerce was not there but they were thinking ahead of their time so they started procuring uh, memorabilia from celebrities so if they met any celebrity or they approached the celebrity on email or whatever they would get something which would then uh, help them to uh, to sell that on cafedreams.com as a signed copy of a book of a great author or sachin tendulkar gave them at a match he gave them an autograph little cricket bat so these things would sell very well on their website and they also got bollywood movie posters from chandni chowk in delhi old places and they made them into big prints and framed them and put them somewhere and people of uh, high profile uh stature in delhi would buy these for thousands of rupees so they started thinking different it was a business venture but it was a creative business venture ahead of its time today we have many people doing it but at that time i found it remarkable that somebody can think like this and start doing something like this which is totally different from uh, the other people i'll also share what we were able to achieve a little bit in government i was director of it and uh, i was responsible for two things mainly as it director one was to set up the it park which atul mentioned and as director it i was also responsible for the e governance which is basically computerization of government services to make your life easier as citizens and uh, at that time in 2003 2004 2005 not much uh, e governance was there and we were not doing transactions on the mobile 
Definitely not. Smartphones were not there. You could not book tickets. You could not order from Amazon, Flipkart. They were not there. You could not pay your bills online. That time we set up something called e-sampark centers in Chandigarh. And e-sampark centers were uh, very popular. Even today, two lakh people visit them every couple of months. And these e-sampark centers, they provide a lot of uh, succor and facilitation and the ease of doing work to the common citizen. Instead of standing in a line in a government office, they go to the e-sampark center and get their work done. About 30 services are now available at e-sampark center. But at that time, it was a creative thought process, which my boss and I, in fact, uh, Mr. Karan Avtar Singh, who was finance secretary and secretary IT at that time of Chandigarh, and I was the director IT. He is now the chief secretary of Punjab. And he encouraged me to do that, great officer. And uh, I was able to implement the e-sampar project. Now today, all politicians of Chandigarh, MCs, they want e-sampar centers in their sector, which shows that it was a successful project. But I dream, need not have done that. I could have gone through my tenure just being director IT and doing normal things. I didn't need to have a new project like that. Nobody told me to do it. However, I felt like bringing in something new and I was able to do it. And I still receive that blessings, especially of the elderly. Whenever I meet them in Chandigarh, they will definitely bless me for having done that. So these kinds of creative pursuits come maybe once in a lifetime. But if we think creatively and encourage our students to think creatively, then we are building a better future. You see, our students, as Atul said, uh, we are, we, they don't really have creativity as part of the curriculum. And the British educationist, Mr. Robinson, is absolutely right when he said that creativity has to be part of the curriculum. There has to be study of creativity. We have to spend time with the students spending hours and hours thinking creatively and trying to think originally, original ideas, which grown-ups cannot at times think. Grown-ups uh, become routinized in their thinking. The children are much more creative, as you know. So encouraging creativity in their lives and in their early years will make them better prepared for a bright future. And in fact, in uh, schools and education system, the emphasis on marks is too much. We must have a little bit of change where creative thinking is also given a score that it is encouraged in an answer sheet, in, in a kind of a project or in a class activity. Whoever thinks creatively, whichever students come up with better ideas, brighter ideas, brighter ways of thinking, they should be encouraged. And instead of what happens in the education system at times, an original thinker is actually discouraged. In the government also, often it happens to us, we are discouraged. So we must encourage creativity, even a wild idea. You know of Nek Chand's Rock Garden. Nek Chand's Rock Garden uh, came up, uh, what is an English very strong word, surreptitiously, which means it came up uh, in secret. It, nobody knew about Nek Chand's Rock Garden. He was a road inspector in the PWD. He started collecting these old artifacts and he started displaying them over there. And uh, the officers actually discouraged him. And he was often penalized or asked his explanation was called. Later, one chief engineer, he recognized the potential. And that chief engineer has to be praised for allowing Nek Chand to do what he did. He set up the Nek Chand Rock Garden and it became one of the most beautiful uh, projects of Chandi. Just an example of creativity. So I'm handing over to Atul for more ideas on creativity and a beautiful film on Shulini. Thank you, Vivek. And this one is actually for my very dear students. And I wanted to share with you a little bit about my story. So students, uh, I went to IIT Kanpur, as I mentioned, but I was never a great student. I scored 76% in my 10th and 74% in my 12th. And uh, typically these type of students with these type of marks do not make it to IIT, as you all know. But I was the first student who ever made it to IIT from Himachal. So what did I do different? So before that, I also wanted to mention that uh, I am a little bit dyslexic uh, to the extent that I cannot write. My handwriting is really, really bad. I cannot write and connect words. 
uh, I have a horrible handwriting. So which basically meant I didn't get marks in school. So a typical person would believe that, you know, this student will not get that successful. But I knew everything in class, I knew everything in school, and especially in things like history, especially in areas like uh, civics, I would build stories in my mind. And it's so easy to remember when you have stories. So your right side of the brain is all about stories and creativity. And the left side of your brain is all about data and numbers. And who remembers numbers? No one. I don't even remember my birthday, Vivek. But I remember the lovely gifts I get on the birthday when I remember the date. So let's do a small uh, example over here. Let's think about a tune. Let's think about a song that we haven't heard for 10 years. And I'm uh, remembering a song called Dil Dhadak Dhadak Ke Keh Raha Hai Abhija. Some of the students might not know it, but the teachers would. Even after 10 years, I can remember the tune. I can remember the tune up to the microsecond, the nanosecond. Right, Vivek? So can you? And that's the beauty of the right brain. Imagine how precise it is. So if you can start thinking stories, you can actually start learning way better. So let's do a small uh, test over here. Let's do a small exercise over here on, on creativity. So I'm going to give all of you are you, can you see this Vivek on screen? Yes, yes, yes. This is a large number. Can you guys take uh, one minute and remember this number? Okay, Vivek, you want to take a call? Do you want to try it out whether you remember the number or not? Can anyone do that? 26319-70-something-7011. Wow, you're really good. Okay, so you remembered it. No wonder you're such a creative person. But let me now do it, how I would do it. So uh, the number is 26319-761-27011. And the way I remembered it was through a story. My name is Atul Kostla. I was born on the 26th of March, which is 26th, 1976 was the first time I went to school in Solon. Sol, Solon, Himachal Pradesh. Himachal Pradesh has 12 districts and has a population of 70 million people. Himachal Pradesh is also the first in social welfare and is amongst the number one state in economic development. So that's 263. Two, six, 20, I was born on 26th of March. Three is March. 1976 was the time when I went to school in Solon when I started school. Himachal has 12 districts, that's 12. Uh, population of 70 million uh, people, that's 70. It's number one in economic development and number one in, in uh, social behavior. So let's see the number again and let's see whether it is the right number or not. Here you go. So did I get it right, Vivek? Yeah, you did. And that's what it is. So stories can really help you learn. Uh, so students, start thinking about stories. Teachers, help your, help your students build stories. Let them start enjoying mathematics. Pythagoras theorem can be taught through stories, can be taught, taught through uh, toys, can be taught through mechanisms. Uh, let's do that. I think technology can be used in a very positive way as far as these things are concerned. So creativity is not just about playing the guitar. Creativity is not just about singing songs. Of course, that is very important. Creativity is about making our learning better, becoming successful and having fun in the process. Every successful person I know, every successful person in this world, and your teachers will tell you students and teachers, you already know this has got some very serious hobby. And I'll give some examples over here. Steve Jobs was very fond of singing. He used to play the guitar. Our very own prime minister, Mr. Modi, he is a very big fan of yoga. And everyone who you'll see as very successful will do stuff outside his or her comfort zone. Vivek writes, he writes every week. Vivek does meditation. I enjoy cooking. I baked a cake yesterday, Vivek, a banana cake. It turned out horrible, but still I tried. 
Anyway, next time I'll bring the cake picture. You know, it's it's quite good. So you are the future of uh, the country. The young students of India are the future of the country. I would like to thank the teachers at this juncture over here. You are Corona warriors. You are actually, in my mind, the real Corona warriors. You have ensured that you bring creativity into your lectures. You're actors now. Imagine your lectures, your classes are now not just being seen by the students, but by the nana, nani, dada, dadis, uncle, aunts, everyone around. And you've ensured that not a single day of learning is lost. You have pressure at home. You've got your own children. You've got your own parents. But you've not. Uh, you've ensured that not a single day of learning is lost. Keep on teaching. So salute to all of you. Salute for you to make young Indians super successful, young human beings super successful. Because we know that it's the young people of this world who change history. That is my passion. That is the passion of Shulini. We'd love to uh, you know, have questions from all of you. Please ask questions. But before you sort of put your questions and start writing, I've got a small video on Shulini, which all of you will resonate with. Because I know that this is also the story of Royal Convent School in Moga. So if you allow me, uh, Vivek, I'm going to play this video. Please do it. Oh, no, sorry, I've got the wrong video. I apologize. I hope I can locate it. Give me one second, friends. Throughout history, the young have always been the ones to shape the future. biggest asset, a best bet to conquer the future. So what are you waiting for? Your time to dream is now. Dream of the research that can change the world. Dream of a high-flying corporate career. Dream of higher studies in the world's best universities. Dream of developing cutting-edge technology of the future. Dream of your own global startup. University. We empower you and enable you to chase your dreams and change the world. Shuri University. Think learning. Think success. So before we get into Q&A, uh, I will again try to say, go and see the movie Three Idiots. I think that just talks about the right way to think about creativity. I think it's a story of many of us and that's why it was so successful. It's definitely my story and I know it's a big story. I definitely didn't do very well at IIT. That's why I ended up becoming a manager, which I love. I love teaching. So I'll, I'll end up my thought before we go to Vivek by saying, apart from creativity, also choose a job and career that you love. And once you do that, you won't have to work a day in your life because you bring in creativity into that. You'll find it fun every day, every moment of your life. So those are thoughts from me. Vivek, any last thoughts before we get into Q&A? Yes, I'm going to give one of my formulas today and there are many students, so 
and teachers as well. So three things that we need to adopt to make life more successful and happier and achieve more in life uh, are innovation, inspiration, and integrity. Three I's. So the formula is three I minus I minus M. And the three I's are inspiration, innovation, and integrity. Innovation comes from creative thinking. Inspiration comes from your heart, from your approach, from your attitude. And integrity comes from the parents, comes from your learning and from within, that you want to have a straight and character-filled approach to life. So three I minus I. What is the I that you want to reduce? It is the sense of I-ness. That means ego, I, I, I. Me, me, me. Har cheez apne center. So be not so self-centered. And if we expand our thought process to help others become more compassionate, we reduce the ego. And reducing the ego means you are more successful and happier. And the last is many uh, times we emphasize too much on money and marks. So uh, marks are important. Don't take me wrong. You have to work hard and get more marks and learn more. But if we think only about marks at the cost of everything else, then we are not really making a mark in life. And money also is overrated. People uh, can have this much X amount or 2X or 10X and their happiness quotient may be the same. So we have to rethink our time and our life creatively and find what really matters. So let's take some questions, Atul. Absolutely. I think teachers, uh, you can ask your questions on Q&A or in the chat bot, even students love to answer those. But uh, I have a couple of Vivek before we keep on seeing questions over here. Sure. Uh, can creativity be taught? Can you build creativity? What do you very, think? very good point, Atul. Very good question. It is just like saying our leaders born or made. So are creative people born or made? I think creativity does come from your basic uh, characteristics and nature, but a lot of creativity can be taught as well. I can be inspired to become creative because some role model of mine is so creative. I, not being a creative person, might emulate that person or want to become like him or her and start thinking creatively in my own life. So as a leader, if somebody is creative, the team also starts thinking like that. And in fact, uh, uh, just to talk about my uh, government career, once I actually called a meeting in Panchkula on innovation and creativity. Government never has such meetings. So I said, today we're just going to think of new ideas in which to work better for the citizens. And people came up with great ideas. So creativity needs to be encouraged and also built up. I think. No, absolutely. I think I'll just add over here, Vivek, that uh, we all are creative in some form or the other. I might be creative in uh, storytelling or telling jokes or cooking, or I might have a great visual sense. Some people might be very good at singing. So uh, we have to define what we are good at and I think pursue that because uh, it also is a form of meditation, you know, pursuing creativity. So there's some questions which are coming up. Jyoti Ma'am is asking, Vivek, uh, how do you improve the concentration power in small kids? And how to tr uh, channelize that tremendous energy into creativity? I think it's a very, very good question, Jyoti Ma'am. Vivek, what do you think? You run a school, which is a toddler school. So I, I know you've got lots of answers over here. Yeah, I think it's a great question, in fact. Uh, and that is exactly what the challenge is. To channelize that energy that the students have into a concentrated kind of approach towards success or whatever building up. So a child has boundless energy and will keep on doing things. How can we make that child concentrate a little better? Perhaps incentivizing is what needs to work. So in class or in activities, some kind of recognition of the child. Whenever the child is encouraged by doing some better work in concentrating in some study or something, compared to what the child was doing earlier, that child feels encouraged to do more. If you discourage a child from something, then that effect is not as good. So if you say that, you know, if you don't do this, then I'm going to, you know, take uh, punish you or something. That doesn't work. What works is, that well done and you'll get uh, something or you'll get good marks or you'll get a star on your copy or I'll make you a smiley. Something like that might work better and concentration might improve if you keep engaging the child. Atul? 
Absolutely. I think uh, uh, typically uh, fun things add to, you know, when added to learning, uh, you know, uh, lead to more creativity and lead to energy sort of being pushed in that. So uh, it's very interesting. I want to tell a small story over here, Vivek. I, uh, I'm very lucky. I started my primary education at Oxford where my father was doing his PhD. So I can falsely claim that I'm Oxford educated. Uh, <laughs> I did my first two years, but it's very interesting. You know, I could speak good English. I knew a bit of maths, but when I came back to uh, India, I just didn't know how to read and write. So I was put in the uh, second standard, both me and my elder brother, because both of us could speak English and we could do maths. So they didn't test us for writing. They thought this guy must be knowing how to write. So my elder brother was a year ahead of me. So he knew how to read and write. I did not know how to read and write. So he would do my homework every day. So life went on, both of us were in the second standard. And one day the teacher figured out that I didn't know how to read and write. So I was then demoted to KG and he was promoted to third standard. And that's the way we typically do it in India, you know. Uh, but think about the education system in the West, which I think is a little more mature. And it used to be, by the way, the same in India with the Gurukul system. And we somewhere lost it. Where they're basically saying, we'll teach you how to read and write. We'll teach you the basics of maths. We'll teach you. And th that's the next question. We'll pick that up. Uh, and uh, but uh, you can learn how to read and write uh, over time. So uh, I have another very interesting story. You know, at Shulini, there are you know, on a campus there are two little girls. One is Indian. She is uh, uh, she goes to a school called Saint Luke's, which is the best school in uh, Solon. I also went to that school, and we also have uh, uh, a Taiwanese lady whose little daughter is there. Both I think the Taiwanese girl is probably eight years old and the Indian girl is seven year old. And the mother of the seven year old Indian girl very proudly is telling me that, look, you know, uh, my girl knows how to read and write and can do all this multiplication. She knows all these tables and look at the Taiwanese girl. She doesn't know anything. In fact, my little girl is teaching her. And I didn't say anything to her. I didn't want to disappoint her, but I, in my mind was telling, but look at the amazing life experience that that Taiwanese girl is having living in COVID times in India, in a campus in Himachal. And sometimes we ignore these beautiful things that can happen, Vivek. So learning is not just about tables and other things. So that would be my uh, two minute answer, but let's go into uh, Shubh Kiran, ma'am. There are some questions on Q and A, Vivek. Yeah, yeah, I can see. Um, uh, she's saying, how do you get more ideas from you, Vivek? Uh, you might want to talk about your uh, you know, YouTube uh, that you run and I can give this. So Shulani University does a lot of these webinars every every day. So you can go to our YouTube, just type Shulani University and you'll see lots of uh, webinars happening over there. Uh, but Vivek, even you have a, uh, right? You have a YouTube channel, right? Yeah, so you all can watch uh, videos on Shulani's channel or my channel also. And if you search for Shulini University on YouTube, you'll see many of our webinars, which we have done, uh, Atul and I, through this series. So go to YouTube and uh, search for Shulini University. Go to YouTube and search for Vivek Atre. You'll get my TEDx talks and you'll get my Josh talks and you'll get other talks that I've done. And many of them may give you more uh, idea about what we're talking here. And also stay connected on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great professional website for all of you to be a uh, part of LinkedIn as well as Instagram. I'm there in all these platforms. Atul is also there. So you can follow us on uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, etc. Just type out our name and you'll find us. And uh, Atul, there's another one on dealing Just with... Jasleen Ma'am is asking. Yeah, that's right. Why don't you pick that up? Maybe? Okay. Jasleen Ma'am is asking, how can we make uh, students more creative, senior students? Because they generally ignore the creative part and want to pursue their academic goals. Yeah, so obviously parents keep telling them that study hard and, but then all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy and uh, we have to balance their lives. So they need to be encouraged to probably follow the rule that most of the time you cannot, uh, you can study, but sometimes you need to take out time to pursue your creative pursuits like reading books, Children don't read enough books nowadays. We used to read more when we were growing up. You will also agree. All the teachers, storybooks, uh, thinking creatively comes from reading the different authors. 
and so many ideas will come to them so encourage them to read books at least that will improve their uh, writing ability as well as reading ability and then maybe you can also tell them in school that okay today this is creativity period so you can now now let's all come up with great ideas i do something called building up a story so i give the first sentence someone else will give the next sentence someone else will give the third sentence so they all start thinking uh, creatively can do things like that i mean it's not in our hands today vivek but uh, if it's in my hands i would ban tuitions i think what's happening is students are not concentrating in class which they should and they're going to tuitions and that's why their you know curriculum is so packed uh i mean if if the parents over here i would say parents uh, I, i i can only tell you about me vivek i never went to a tuition class uh i never spent more than 2 or 3 hours studying and i still got into id i always say you know 3 hours a day is all you need in 11th and 12 to crack id j and i'm not saying i'm the most brilliant guy around because i'm not but the challenge is students don't think they have such a routine that they're rotating things and the moment you start rotating things then you're in, uh, then it's a very slippery slope so uh, i know as teachers you can't help it because uh, you can't prevent you know parents sending uh, kids to tuitions but that's one area that i think one should really avoid and then you'll have more time for creativity you'll have more time for other things fun stuff that you can do i think pratibha ma'am's question is similar so activities for the right brain are similar creative activities in class make them think make them analyze do group discussions with senior students maybe with junior ones you can do some other play activities or whatever are creative in chemistry how can we do in senior classes yeah so chemistry is obviously with lots of formulas and lots of technical details have to be there but some activity practicals and some ways of maybe analyzing some material that you bring from home and do some experiment in class you know anything that you feel that can be done so kanwal ma'am is asking a very interesting question and she's saying how do we make maths a more interesting more creative yeah so obviously you have to give examples and stories and uh, there are many interesting uh, uh, questions in uh, you know in the maths books also a merchant had five camels someone else had 12 camels you know or whatever it is so try and build up that story of the merchant that uh, why do you think he had five camels what do you think he did with them so then you know maths also becomes a little more interesting if you start talking like that that's the only I way i think ma'am is probably thinking about more advanced mathematics like differential calculus uh-huh uh, i i don't know you know i think uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a difficult one ma'am because uh, i i i can tell you that i really struggled in maths at iit because i uh, i went into the wrong cycle at iit where i was not understanding things so i think making them understand uh, maths that's really was needed in maths because you remembering stuff doesn't help but everyone doesn't have a mathematical brain uh, that's for sure so um, i mean uh, up to 10th or 12th up to 10th for example i think what vivek is saying a lot of stuff can be done for example pythagoras theorem can be taught i think you can go to the internet also there are lots of very interesting things you can also inspire your students there are some very amazing books uh, there's a author by the name of richard feynman uh, he's a nobel prize winner from the us he's got some amazing books on lectures on physics and mathematics physics. by richard feynman Uh, amazing stuff where he talks about he gives real life examples of usage of those theorems i think that really then brings in the question and curiosity why we should learn why we should do differential calculus etc uh then we have poonam ma'am and atul uh, sir asking some questions vivek yeah i can uh, see that you? i can see them yeah so imagination in and real life see students when they mature they start to understanding these things that uh, the dream world is absolutely the dream world but it's important to be imaginative and sometimes you think of uh, you know what was that kiske haseen sapne hote the ya to some some guy mungeri mungeri lal mungeri lal mungeri lal ke haseen sapne exactly so so there is no harm in to some extent just ideating and uh, google and ibm and other companies actually tell their employees that this half day you just ideate just think creative thinking time so then you come back to your maths and your chemistry and your physics 
uh, formulas. So everything has to be given time, a portion, uh, and properly balanced. Atulji is asking, can we relate mannerism with creativity for senior students? So mannerisms basically means uh, way of ways of uh, talking, walking, expressing yourself, and creativity in that is also possible. Yes, uh, there can be creative mannerisms, but you have to be uh, in the discipline zone, so you cannot start talking in manners which are different totally. And uh, imagination leads to invention. Pratibha Ma'am is saying absolutely. Without imagination, not possible to be invented. I think uh, Atul. Uh, absolutely right, and uh, imagination does lead to invention. Uh, creativity is all about uh, leading to new ideas, new things, inventing new ideas, new things. Uh, I can only give you from my uh, experience every day, and I'm an ideas person, every day I step back and I think about new things to do. And I tell my faculty members every day, each one of you think about doing one new thing, however stupid, however, however small it might be. Uh, something like ideas that matter, you know, Vivek and I met and said, you know, we, we should do something. And we started with something very small. We started with one school and it just became so popular that we've now, I think we've got the whole uh, month of uh, month book for us. Uh, and, and we're doing it one school at a time. You know, we said, let's not make it big. Let's make it different so that we can interact. So hopefully you guys liked it. I think time is coming to an end. I'll request Gurdeep sir and Rima ma'am to come online. But as they come online, Vivek, we'd love to hear your Einstein story. You know, I always get goose pimples. It's so creative. But you want to tell that story before we close? Okay. So no, I'm good to ma'am. Would love if you could unmute and uh, start your video, please. Ma'am and uh, Gurdeep, you can come yeah. online. Uh, yes. So Einstein uh, was lecturing in the U.S. and many a time he would uh, he would always deliver a lecture on the theory of relativity, which was his great theory, of course. And Einstein uh, would go around uh, being very popular, listened to by all these university towns. And Albert Einstein was a famous man, but those towns had still not seen his photograph. Because in those eras, the photographs were not very common, and digital photographs definitely not. The driver was the same. He would drive Einstein from one town to another town to another town, and he would sit at the back and listen to Einstein's lecture each time. After 24 towns, the driver never said anything till today. Suddenly, they're driving to the 25th town, and the driver says, Sir, Mr. Einstein, I have heard your lecture 24 times. I think even I can deliver this lecture now. So Einstein is surprised, amazed, but he says, great, they don't know how I look. You become Einstein, I become the driver. So they change places and they go there and they are received. I mean, the driver is received with flowers by the university and Einstein goes and sits at the back like a driver and he listens to the uh, driver. The driver goes on the stage and he delivers a lecture on the theory of relativity for one hour. Flawless, perfect lecture, no mistake, because he's heard it so many times. But still, to do that was amazing. Einstein claps, everybody applauds, everybody cheers, and the driver is thrilled on the stage. But one professor, old professor, has a question. And this question is obviously a very complicated question, so he asks that question, and the driver looks at him, and he says, oh, that's a very simple question, sir. My driver sitting at the back will answer it. So that uh, uh, is a kind of uh, presence of mind, poise, and creativity which the driver of Einstein displayed, which inspires us even today. Atul? Amazing. You know, it's an amazing story. You know, I'm going to try it out once. I hope I have a driver who can give my lectures right. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you, teachers. Thank you, students. Thank you, parents. Uh, thank you. Rina ma'am, Gurjeet sir, I think uh, we've really, really enjoyed. I think uh, when uh, when Vivek smiles, I know that he's really enjoying himself. Uh, mm -hmm. While he pretty much smiles all the time, he enjoys life. Uh, but love to hear from your thoughts, uh, Gurjeet sir or Rina ma'am, would you like to speak for a minute or so before we end? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you, Mr. Atul. It's uh, very nice to listen, listen for you people. It's a really wonderful time for the all staff. And really, at the end, it's a very interesting story of Albert Einstein. So really, 
uh, it was a you know very enjoyable moments and i hope uh, our staff and uh, all the students will get motivated with you at this counseling session so thank you so much for sparing a time wonderful time with us thank you so much rima ma'am thank you thank you vivek sir thank you atul sir as uh, gudeep sir said the time really went well and uh, the best thing which i remember for me was being calm is going to be creative so i am definitely going to apply all the formulas given by you it was really inspiring really motivating and all the ideas i think my teachers were really you know going to apply all the creative ideas given by you for all the subjects and also all the motivation things given by you thank you so much for being with us and you've been so wonderful and lovely thank you thank you gurdeep sir reema ma'am we really enjoyed this and uh, you know hopefully when corona goes away which i'm sure it will very soon lots of creative people working on biology i would love to invite you over to shilini we'd love to have your teachers and students and of course both of you i can just make all of you jealous that it's uh, 16 degrees in solon right now i almost wore a sweater but you guys uh, yeah uh, have a lot of heat out there <laughs> so, over here left hand yeah we northern <laughs> people are having acs in our office <laughs> we are making up to that <laughs> around 45 degree you will run from here Yeah. <laughs> we'll, Gudeep sir will still come. I think once we open up, we'll request Shikha ma'am to set up a seminar uh, for your teachers and students. And Vivek and I would love to come and visit. I have never been to your place, uh, but would love to visit the interiors of Punjab and and hopefully we'll get some lovely lassi also now. Sure, sure. We will definitely arrange that. <laughs> we shall wait for you any time you come. Thank you so much, thank you. Mr. Vivek so and Mr. Atul. Thank you so much for thank your you nice. Stay connected. Thank you. Finally, be safe, everyone. Have a great day. Bye bye. Thank you.